Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be working with an infinite sum. And you might be asking, what does this have to do with complex numbers, right? We'll find out. Let me go ahead and show you two methods. I'll make two attempts. All right, let's start with the first method. So since I have a sum of cosines, by the way, this sum may look a little ambiguous and I know in the thumbnail it didn't look uh, very clear either because what is going on here? Is, is the next term cosine of 4 theta divided by 8 or is it 3 theta divided by 6? Okay, let me show you a more clear or clearer expression with the summation symbol. So basically what we're doing here is we're taking n theta, which is, and then we're taking the cosine and dividing but by 2 to the power n. So the numerators are basically cosine of n theta. It's going to go like theta, 2 theta, 3 theta, but the denominators are powers of 2. So it's going to be like 2, 4, 8, 16. Make sense? Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and write it in a slightly better way. All right. So here's the sum we're trying to evaluate. 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2 plus cosine 2 theta divided uh oh what is going on notability come on you can do a little better than that plus cosine 3 theta divided by 8 so on and so forth okay this is probably more clear now let's see how we can find it uh, I said I call this the first method right let me go ahead and write it down again now to be able to find this sum I'm going to basically look at each cosine separately for example is there a formula for cosine 2 theta Yes, it is called the double angle and there's three versions, but I want to stick to cosine to cosine. So I'm going to write this as 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 divided by 4. The reason I like the cosine version is because I have a cosine theta, so I want to stick to the same function so I don't have to deal with some difficulties. For cosine 3 theta, you may or may not have memorized this. I haven't, but I'm going to give it to you. It's cos 4 cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta and that'll be divided by 8 and of course that is going to be a cosine 4 theta which you can double this uh, cosine 2 theta and then replace cosine 2 theta and then the 4 5 theta there's another formula so on and so forth but yeah it gets more and more complicated hopefully you get the idea and here here's what I'm seeing I'm seeing that okay I do have a 1 definitely it's a good thing to have I mean we don't we can deal with that separately if needed but this kind of gives me cosine squared theta divided by 2 when I simplify even when I simplify this I get the same thing which is nice cosine cubed theta over 2 so this kind of gives me a sum of powers of cosine which is trigonometrically doable because cosine is less than 1 greater than negative 1 and uh, it is going to converge but I have extra terms negative 1 half what am I going to do with this right this is going to give me a negative one, I mean, sorry, negative one fourth or negative three over eight cosine theta. So you see, we're getting extra cosines and who knows what, what's going to happen in the future, right? I mean, as you go forward. So this is not very feasible. I don't think this is going to work nicely. If you know of a way to work it out, please let us know because I'm curious. And of course, this is something that uh, can be left as an exercise, right? <laughs> Great for practice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is uh, the purpose. By the way, I forgot to tell you this problem was uh, from uh, Shams series. Shams Outlines, are you familiar with those series? They're really cool series, pretty much on everything. They have a book and this is called Complex Variables Second Edition. A friend of mine actually, uh, who's a math uh, teacher at a public school, he let me borrow. Actually, he gave it to me as a gift, so I really appreciate it uh, because he knows that I have a channel and I do problems in complex uh, variables and so on and so forth. Anyways, cool. So I have that book and I just picked this problem from there and I think it's a really nice problem. And this is kind of different from what we did so far. We've done a lot of basic problems and this could probably be considered a little bit more advanced. I don't know. When I try to rate the problems, I kind of try to put them into three different categories like basic, medium, and then maybe hard. I don't think we've done a lot of hard problems, but you let me know what you think. Please, uh, in the comment section down below, if you think this is a medium or a hard problem, of course, look at the previous problems and hopefully share your ideas. Um, I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to, you know, 
make it biased. Anyways, so we have the sum. Again, first method, not very good. Skip that one. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the second method, which should be nicer. So let's go ahead and rewrite the sum. 1 plus cosine theta over 2 plus, I mean the original sum, not this one. 2 theta over 4 and then 3 theta over 8. You get the idea? This is a 3. This is 2 to the power 3. So that's how you form this sum. An infinite sum, of course. That's why we have to be careful with the uh, convergence. All right? Cool. This is my sum, and here's what we're going to do. And this might come as a surprise, obviously, because you're like, where does this come from? Okay, it comes through practice, but I'm going to define my complex number. This is where the A plus BI or the Z comes in. That's why uh, we have this problem on this channel. Z, I'm going to pick my Z as one half times E to the power I theta. In other words, I wrote this in polar form with the modulus being one half. And there's a reason why I pick one half, because uh, we have powers of two in the denominator, which means we have powers of one half. So basically the absolute value of Z from here is gonna be one half, right? Hopefully you got to see that. Now, here's what we're gonna consider next, which is the coolest part, I think, of the solution, in my opinion. We're gonna consider an infinite sum, a geometric series with uh, Z's, okay? And as you know, if the absolute value of z is between negative 1 and 1. This also works with complex numbers. This converges. And the sum is 1 over 1 minus z. Okay? Cool. Nice. But how does this apply to our problem? Here's the thing. If you replace z with this expression right here on both sides, obviously you're going to get powers of z on the left, right? And... Something simple on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and write, write that first. Uh, and I want to expand this. So I'm going to write it as 1 minus 1 half because it makes it a little easier to subtract from 1. And if you didn't, I guess you could still multiply by something to make it workable. Anyways, uh, I'm going to write it as 1 half times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay? So that's my right hand side. And I mean the equation. And the left-hand side is going to look like what? So we're going to take these expressions. For example, what is 1? 1 is 1. <laughs> what is z? z is 1 half times e to the i theta. So let's go ahead and write it kind of vertically. Uh, z is going to be 1 half times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then z squared is just going to be 1 fourth and then cosine 2 theta. Because when you square a number in uh, polar form or kind of like this... Uh, you know, this form, you're basically going to double the angle, right? Uh, and because if you square it like this, you're going to get e to the 2i theta, which indicates your new argument is 2 theta. And then if you cube it, you're going to get 1 over 8 times cosine of 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. I'm not putting the thetas in parentheses. I hope you don't mind because that's too much work. I'm lazy. And now you, we're going to be adding all of these things up. But guess what? I don't really care about the imaginary part because that doesn't really give me anything. Imaginary parts have signs in them and I only care about the cosine. Get, get the idea? So let's go ahead and only add the cosines. We're going to get 1 half cosine theta plus 1 fourth cosine 2 theta plus 1 eighth cosine 3 theta and so on and so forth. And guess what that's equal to? That's equal to my sum. Exactly, right? Wait a minute. Well, you had the Squares and cubes, no, no, I mean the original sum, right? There you go. Okay, we got it. So the real part on the left-hand side should equal the real part on the right-hand side, which is going to come from here. So let's go ahead and work that out, find out what the real part of that number is going to be, and that should not be too hard at all, right? You have this number. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Obviously, this is going to give you 1 over 1 minus cosine theta over 2. I'm going to separate the real part. And then the imaginary part is just going to be i sine theta over 2, right? After i distribute the negative 1 half. And so this becomes the real part, but that becomes the imaginary. But wait, wait a minute. This is in the denominator. So I need to multiply. Let me go ahead and if I can erase this side, if you don't mind, I'm going to multiply on the left, which is okay, right? So we're going to multiply by 1 minus cosine theta over 2. i got to be careful. I'm not changing the sign here. I'm changing the sign here. So that's going to be like i sine theta over 2. And of course, the denominator is going to be the same thing. 
You don't have to use parentheses. I just wanted to emphasize uh, the real and imaginary parts. And when you do that, you're going to get 1 minus cosine theta over 2, right? And like this. And that will be divided by the product of these two things. But when you multiply those two things, you're going to get something like this. Let me tell you. You're going to get 1 minus cosine theta and basically let's let's see we're going to multiply that by okay when we multiply this it's going to be 1 minus cosine theta over 2 squared plus sine squared theta over 4 okay great so i'm only interested in that part because uh, that's actually no that's not true i'm interested in the whole thing so let me go ahead and rewrite it real quick that's going to give me a 1 fourth 5 fourths so it's going to be like this let's fix it real quick 1 minus cosine theta over 2 divided by 5 fourths minus cosine theta and if I multiply the top and the bottom by 4 that should give me 4 minus 2 cosine theta divided by 5 minus 4 cosine theta and that should be the answer and this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe to <laughs> be safe, take care, and bye bye.